What's up guys and welcome to today's video where we are going to be talking about crypto crimes. How criminals hide billions of dollars in stolen cryptocurrency and how they try and cash it out in a game of cat and mouse with the police. So first thing is that crypto is a very dangerous game. In the news just recently we had over 600 million dollars stolen from the poly network in what they say is the largest crypto hack ever. But of course, throughout history, there are numerous cases of hackers stealing everybody's cryptocurrencies. Just check out this list, which contains a huge number of crypto hacks that have taken place. Etabase, amount stolen, 5.4 million. BlockFi, again, stolen. Altbit, 73k, upbit, 49 million. Buy true 4.2 million. The list really goes on and on. Um, definitely a very dangerous game. And outside of getting an exchange hacked, there's also the risk of the founder just taking everybody's money. So with Thodex, which was a popular Turkish cryptocurrency exchange, the founder reportedly stole $2 billion of investor assets. And this is a picture of him in Istanbul airport going to Albania. That's the last anybody saw of him. And of course, people are even being kidnapped for their cryptocurrency. So the head of a major exchange in Ukraine got kidnapped and he had to pay $1 million of his crypto to the kidnappers. So fair to say that there are a lot of ways to lose your cryptocurrency. So for today's story, I want to trace the journey of Bitfinex, which was one of the most notorious hacks. So on August 3rd of 2016, Reports start coming in from Twitter. People start saying that their funds are being drained, even though they're using two-factor authentication and nobody really knows why. Immediately, the price of Bitcoin plunges by 20%. And the Bitfinex exchange then frees all withdrawals and all transactions. According, according to Reuters, $72 million worth of Bitcoin is stolen from people's wallets by an unknown hacker. And then presents the next part of the story. How is the hacker going to cash out the Bitcoin? What does he do? The first problem he has is that people can see on the blockchain where the crypto went. So they can see it goes to this wallet, the thief's wallet, the hacker wallet. Although nobody knows exactly who that is, they can see the money's being transferred, right? Now, normally, if you want to get your money out of crypto, you can send it to an exchange and transfer it into you know, pounds or US dollars or whatever. However, nowadays, exchanges are willing to turn you in if you're engaged in criminal activity. There is a lot of regulatory oversight over these exchanges now. So the hacker can't really risk going to most exchanges without revealing his identity. So what we see is that in 2017, he turns to the dark net. The hacker sends 300 Bitcoin to Alphabay. And Alphabay is the biggest darknet market at the time. And what we find is that in these darknet marketplaces, several service providers will sell cash out services. So take a look at this marketplace listing on Hydra, which is the Russian darknet marketplace. And you can see here that you can buy this service with Bitcoin. And then what they will do is they will send somebody to dig a hole in the ground 20 centimeters deep, put a vacuum sealed bag of cash in that and then give you the GPS location for the treasure, the buried treasure, <laughs> right? So this is a cash out service, right? And this is the exact same kind of thing that you could find in Alphabay at this period of time. So in January 2017, the hacker puts 300 Bitcoin towards these kind of cash out services. However, problem strikes again. In late 2017, Alphabay is shut down. So then the hacker turns to Hydra, which is the Russian speaking darknet market. He or she deposits 400 to 500 Bitcoin here. And we can only presume he's using these cash out services just like this one. So you can see on this article on Vice, um, you buy a cash out service and then the dropper will then put it in a discrete location, like, you know, behind a, you know, some, some air vents or pipes or, you know, something like this. Um, they'll give you a JPEG like this, point to where it is, and they'll give you a GPS location like this. And you have to kind of play this whole Pokemon Go thing and find your illegal goods, right? So I assume this is what he did then. 
As well as Hydra, he also used private wallets. Now to explain private wallets, there used to be a system where people would use mixes, right? So you'd send in your Bitcoins into a kind of a shared pool of Bitcoins, right? So you may have thousands and thousands of people people's bitcoins in there you send in your bitcoins and then they'd send you some from the pool right but more and more often they found that these bitcoin mixes first may be government honeypots right so they were totally fake <laughs> right and secondly the police now are much more onto this so the administrator of bitcoin fog which was a very popular bitcoin mixer he got arrested so instead the hacker starts using these privacy wallets which are much more secretive. And you can see in 2019, he starts funneling money into Join Market. Now, Join Market is a privacy wallet that basically mixes your transactions with other people's transactions. So instead of you sending your Bitcoin to somebody, right, you instead team up with somebody else who wants to send their Bitcoins at the same time and you join your transaction, right? This is called coin joining. And it kind of, again, like a mixer, it mixes up your transaction to make it much more harder to see who's transferring money to who. So the hacker puts nearly 250 Bitcoin into join market, into this privacy wallet. But really in the grand scheme of things, the hacker doesn't really transfer much of the stolen Bitcoin that he had. And up until 2021, he doesn't move that much. So most of the stolen Bitcoin stays in that wallet. And one of the biggest reasons for this is that a lot of exchanges start blacklisting the wallet, right? So nobody allows them to deal with it. And there's so many eyes on it that it's very hard to transfer anything out. That is until 2021, when there is a flurry of activity. In 2021, the hacker transfers nearly $800 million worth of Bitcoin. And where does he send it? mostly to the Hydra Darknet marketplace and also some to Wasabi Wallet. And Wasabi Wallet, like Join Market, is another privacy wallet. But he doesn't just send it in a normal way. He sends it in a way they call the peeling chain method. So he sends the coins from the stolen wallet to another wallet, then to another wallet, then to another wallet. But at each stage, he drops off a tiny bit of the coins which eventually go to the Wasabi wallet. So this gives you this kind of circular peeling chain effect, right? And this is of course to, you know, make it harder to track. But, you know, with tools like Elliptic, now which the authorities are using, they can automatically trace, you know, all of the, the blockchain and, and find out where exactly the Bitcoin is going. So again, this is, you know, another reason why it's so damn hard to be able to like uh, hide your stolen crypto. And now it's been five years later since the Bitfinex hack. And some experts think that whoever hacked it may never be able to cash out. Adam Cochran, a technology expert, says that the hacked Bitcoin in the 2016 Bitfinex hack are some of the most tracked and blacklisted Bitcoin pretty much in the world, right? So anything you do with them is gonna be under a watchful eye for sure of the police. So only five years later, only 21% of the stolen Bitcoin has been moved and only 4% of the stolen Bitcoin has been transferred or laundered. That's it for today's episode. As you can see, Bitcoin is a scary thing. Billions being stolen all the time. And I uh, hope you liked the video. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Cheers.